The Changhard Fork is the biggest and most substantial upgrade that the Cardano ecosystem has ever seen and is going to transform the standard for decentralization and governance in the industry of blockchain. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Lake M Crypto. My name is Josh, and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. Cardano is about to go through an upgrade that will accomplish a level of decentralization that no other blockchain has ever been able to accomplish before. The hard fork is named after a former IO team member by the name of Phil Injie Cheng, who sadly passed away in 2022. Cheng made some substantial contributions to the design of Voltaire as the product leader of IOHK, and after looking at his resume, it's not difficult to see why he was selected for this job. Even though he only had a bachelor's degree, from University of Berkeley, he had like 50 years of experience in product development from major businesses all around the world. There may not have been another person on the planet that had such a deep understanding, a cultural understanding of different product development strategies and, and ways that products connect with people from places all around the world like the UK, Japan, the US. He, he got all over the place and I am very grateful that we had him to contribute to Voltaire in the way that he did. This is, this is game over in the race to decentralization in the industry because this hard fork effectively solves the decentralization trilemma that no other blockchain has been able to accomplish to this degree. Consensus, distribution, and governance are the three primary ways that centralized institutions tend to take control over economic systems in one form or another. For a long time, Cardano has led the industry in the realm of consensus with a Nakamoto coefficient of 58, and it's only beat out by some other smaller protocols like Polkadot and Mina protocol, which both have a lot less validators than Cardano does. And since the very beginning, ADA has had one of the most fair launches in the industry of blockchain out of any layer one, with 11.5% being reserved for the team, almost 60% reserved for public sale during the ICO, and a whopping 31% saved for protocol staking rewards. The one thing that Cardano has been missing for a while that other blockchains really haven't really been able to figure out yet is the element of governance. The way most other blockchains run their treasury is not decentralized. If it's not run by a company that's actively making the decisions in a centralized fashion, then sometimes they'll even go so far as to create voting mechanisms that don't actually have any enforceable authority on chain. The Cardano community is about to get full authority over the 1.5 billion ADA in the treasury behind Cardano, and the Cardano community is going to have the authority to give the approval for any Cardano improvement proposals that are submitted from here on out. In this video, we're going to break down kind of how that's going to look Exactly. Uh, there is a, a governmental structure that is established that has checks and balances to make sure that no one entity could abuse the power that they've been delegated. The first body of government consists of DREPs and ADA holders, and ADA holders whether or not they're delegated to other DREPs to make their governance decisions for them. This right here is by far the largest governmental body in the Cardano ecosystem, and it's responsible for actively making all of the decisions behind the Cardano ecosystem. DREPs and ADA holders will uniquely be responsible for voting on decisions around treasury withdrawals and parameter changes, updates to the constitution, and a new constitutional committee in the event of a vote of no confidence. 
ADA holders and D reps also have a collaborative role to play in initiating hard forks and implementing that motion of no confidence, which we'll circle back around in a minute. The next governmental body is a small group of people which I observe as kind of like Cardano's last defense. The Constitutional Committee basically has veto power to be able to turn down any decisions that have been voted positively by the other two governmental bodies, that's the DREPs and the ADA holders and the SPOs, which we'll get to in a second. But they don't veto those decisions based on what they agree or disagree with. They have to vote based on whether or not the decisions are consistent with the Cardano Constitution. The Interim Constitutional Committee, which is the initial committee that was voted in recently, is responsible for drafting version 1 of the Cardano Constitution. The Cardano Constitution is basically the filter through which all decisions are going to be filtered through, which means that the Constitutional Committee will not be voting to veto things that they disagree with. They will only be vetoing things that are deemed unconstitutional. If they do end up vetoing something that is consistent with the Cardano Constitution, they could be in danger of triggering a motion of no confidence, which would mean the replacing of the Cardano Constitutional Committee with a whole brand new one. The last body of government is the one that has carried us all up to this point. That's the stake pool operators. Stake pool operators have a very simple role to play. They can choose to initiate a motion of no confidence, and they can choose to vote in and initiate a new hard fork, because obviously they're the ones that choose to upgrade or not, so of course they would get a vote in the implementation of said forks. But I also think it's important that stakeful operators get a say in initiating a motion of no confidence, because stakeful operators are coming from a much different perspective than general ADA holders are. Generally speaking, they do come from a more technical perspective, and uh, they, they have information that the rest of us might not really understand all that clearly. So I think that it's important that they have this role in the governmental system. Now, governance might very well be the most important part of this hard fork, and it's definitely the thing that everybody's focused on, but it's not the only upgrades that is being brought with the Chang hard fork. The Chang hard fork is bringing with it some scalability upgrades that will effectively bring the Cardano ecosystem from a throughput of 250 TPS to something close to 1000 TPS. It also is bringing with it some security upgrades, which is going to make the most secure blockchain in the world even more secure. I actually uh, don't know a whole lot about what security features are coming with this upgrade. I just know that it has something to do with Cardano's Ouroboros protocol, which is Cardano's liquid staking mechanism, but I just know that uh, something is being upgraded in this area. The Chang hard fork is effectively the beginning of the Voltaire era, and it is destroying what is Cardano's biggest vulnerability, which is the existence of the Genesis keys that are currently owned by the founding entities. After this hard fork, the power of the Genesis keys is going to be destroyed, taking that power away from the founding entities, and it is 100% going to be on the Cardano community now. So I want to know, how do you feel about this hard fork upgrade? Are you excited? Maybe a little bit scared? Me too. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments section below what you think, or just leave your favorite emoji down there for engagement. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.